All right, hi everyone. Um, my name is Melanie Holm and I am with Leslie Garrison of Knockout Pilates. She is half of the Knockout Pilates duo. Sarah Deming is unfortunately not able to make it with with the, oh my gosh, I this is me. I literally, like my brain thinks at one speed, my mouth moves at another speed. Sarah Deming, the other half of Knockout Pilates, is not able to be here with us today, but we she's with us in spirit. Um, and I just would like to take a moment to thank you, Leslie, for taking the time out of what is a very, very busy schedule. I know on your part, especially um, to take some time and talk about your work and what inspires you and what's next for your artistic work and Sarah and Knockout Pilates. So um, I want to give everybody a quick little introduction to how cool you are because a lot of people, because it's me, are opera people. And so they may not even know, like, who is Leslie Garrison? And I'm like, oh, let me tell you how cool she is. Leslie Garrison is a professional dancer, educator, and choreographer who has garnered a reputation internationally for her brilliant technique and artistry mixed with a commitment to education and bringing dance and functional movement to both dancers and non-dancers of all abilities, ages, body types, and backgrounds. As a professional dancer, Leslie spent over 15 years touring the world as a member of the renowned Mark Morris Dance Group. Alistair McCulley, former dance critic for the New York Times, has written of Garrison that it's worth noting that Garrison, outstanding for several reasons among the company's women, is deepening her spell with an intensely effective quality that's rare anywhere, and has also said that her dancing is, quote, the most vividly suggestive of diverse moods. And when you get personal shout outs from Alistair McCauley, just side note to all the opera people, like this is a really big deal, like a really big deal. So just to give you an idea and some context of how cool Leslie is, her choreography has been presented at the Mark Morris Dance Center, SUNY Purchase, Ailey Fordham, the Freer Gallery of Art, and the Arthur M. Sackler Gallery at the Smithsonian Institution. Leslie discovered Pilates as a means to strengthen her dancing, rehabilitate injuries, and feel more confident and embodied. She still continues to learn and study under the tutelage of Clarice, Cl Clarice Marshall. Oh my gosh. Once again, Clarice Marshall. My brain, my mouth. Opera in a different speeds. In addition to her illustrious career with the Mark Morris Dance Group, Leslie has taught dance for 15 years to all kinds of movers, from kids to senior citizens, beginners, and professionals. She has taught in the Dance for Parkinson's Disease program at the Mark Morris Dance Center and teaches Pilates in the pre-professional division of American Ballet Theater's JKO School. Leslie received her Pilates mat and equipment certifications through the Kane School of Core Integration and completed a 200-hour teacher training and restorative prenatal certification with Yoga Vida. Throughout her pregnancy, Pilates and yoga kept Leslie feeling strong and ready for childbirth and were a huge factor in her quick recovery and return to dance. She is passionate about sharing these healing practices with her students. Leslie grew up in Suwannee, Illinois, and received her early dance training at the Center for Creative Arts in St. Louis, Missouri, and also studied at the prestigious Interlochen Arts Academy, Rotterdam's Dance Academy, and received her BFA from SUNY Purchase. She lives in Brooklyn with her husband, Patrick, and their adorable son, Ellis. Thank you, Leslie, for coming on the blog podcast extraordinaire thing. So thank you. That was so I, nice and it's weird to hear about yourself. I, well, people should know how cool you are. And, and especially like, I feel like I bridge a lot of worlds, like I'm like opera and dance. And so, I mean, in the opera world, people aren't as familiar with your work as they are in the dance world. And so I want to make sure that people listening to this have some context of just how cool you are and, and really how incredible it is that you have accomplished all the things you have accomplished because it, it's really extraordinary. And I think, I think it's worth mentioning. So welcome and thank you. Very happy to be here. And yes, thanks for your kind words. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so I'd love to start off with you telling us your story, like a quick little overview of what your journey thus far to like Leslie's, you know, the beginning of where it all started for you with dance, with Pilates and how you got to where you are today. And it can be as in-depth or as personal as you feel comfortable. Sorry, I was just hiding my self view. That's better. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, my first dance class when I, was when I was about three years old, which is really strange to think about now that I have a little two-year-old, almost two-year-old at home. Um, and I, I mean, you know, I was just a little kid love and dance and my mom and dad just kept putting me in classes and I just kept going. And then before you know it, I, the time to decide where I wanted to go for college. And so they were like, well, do you want to keep dancing? And I sure did. And so I went to school, went to college for dance, which was incredible. Um, went to SUNY Purchase and continued my dancing there. Uh, you know, I feel very lucky that my parents were super supportive throughout all of my, all of the, de de the decision-making from uh, being a little kid to, you know, to going to college. They just continue to support every decision that um, I made about wanting to continue. You wanna to go to this camp? Let's go to this camp. We'll find a way, you wanna dance here? So that really supported me. They never really questioned going to college for dance. They were, they were just, <laughs> they were all about it. Luckily, you know, I had that fortune. Um, so yeah, I went to school for dance and uh, that's where I really got into modern dance. I had, I was more like growing up in St. Louis jazz tap uh, circuit. It wasn't, it wasn't competitive dancing, but it was definitely more along like showy, jazzy and tappy stuff, which I love. Um, I did some modern growing up, but um, it was really college that I got really into it. Um, and then shortly after I graduated college, I, um, landed a gig with the Mark Morris dance group, which was just like, what, how did this happen? Um, how did this happen? Uh, it, it, you know, I wasn't expecting myself to be in that company. I, I don't know if you would have asked me, my head was shaved. I thought I was going to like move to like Europe or Israel and like audition for Bakshava. I don't know. I was just kind of, I imagined myself going a, a different route. But I got into the company or, you know, I did some work with them before I became a company member for about four years, really. Um, and I fell in love with the work. You know, I, I was not convinced at first. I was like, what is this? Where am I? Ah, uh, You know, and then I, I just kept doing the work and I kept learning and I kept dancing and um, danced for him for about 15 years, which was incredible. Um super exciting work, exciting theaters, um, exciting, beautiful people. Um, and throughout all of that, I, I was uh, studying Pilates and getting really into just learning more about how my body works and how it functions. Um, I did some, I started Pilates in high school. I did a little bit of Pilates in high school and then, uh, uh, did a little bit in college. It wasn't until after college that I got very serious about it. Um, and it was really in a desire to become a better dancer. Um, anyway, I got really into it. Also, this whole time, you know, starting right after college, I got really into educate, education and teaching. And um, I started off teaching like the creative movement classes at the Mark Morris Dance Center and then kind of just took on every opportunity that came to me and it's so scary you know like I didn't know what I it was a little bit like fake it till you make it type of thing I was just like I know that yeah. I enjoy doing this and I want it to be something that I do like alongside of dancing and maybe after so I just kind of taught everything um I got involved in the dance for PD program and I just learned so much just by diving into teaching um so yeah teaching has been a huge part of the way that I've like learned and you know like I don't know found community and found people and taught 
Yeah, like you said, all different ages and backgrounds and dancers, non-dancers, anyway. So um, teaching. And then I left the dance company, the dance group, almost a year ago. Oh, well, yeah. I was in line. First, I'm... I had a baby. So um, <laughs> two years ago, I had my son, Ellis, who's incredible. And, and he's so cute. Cute. So cute. <laughs> um, dear, dear boy. I had my baby. Uh, and then I danced for a little bit longer with company. Um, did a bunch of touring, did some big shows. And it was just, it was clear that it was time for me to move on from that. And so a lot of things were kind of converging at once. Like I had Ellis. I was leaving the company and then the studio kind of came up. My my friend, Sarah Deming, who's my partner, um, she was like, we have this space. You know, do you want to go in on this with me? And I kind of just like jumped in and it was all kind of happening at the same time. Leaving company, having Ellis and starting a business. So that was just a weird uh, <laughs> whirlwind of events that I'm so grateful for, but it's been wild. And so now I'm a business owner and an entrepreneur, which is also yes. weird to say, but I, I feel very grateful to have my own space and to be able to teach from my own beautiful space and share what I know and work with people to make them feel better in their bodies. And um, so I'm into it. So now, you know, I'm dancing a little bit, um, not a lot in, as much right now, which is a huge transition. But my, you know, my life is very full with being a mom and having this business. And so that's kind of it. I mean, there's a lot there, but like, that's a, that's, that's a lot, especially at once, you know, to like start a business, finish a phase of your career, be a mom, be a wife, adult, like all of that roped into one is, it's, it's a lot of hats. <laughs> And it feels good. No, it feels um to to have like been a professional dancer. And you know, I still very much identify as a as a dancer, even though I don't have a show on the books, you know. Um, it just takes so much like focus and um dedication, like a lot of things, um, to be really top in your field. Uh and so to like step away from from that kind of like serious blinders on like this is what I have to do to like make this happen and so it, it feels good to be able to like wear many hats at this point in my life and like share myself in many different ways um, because it was so single pointed for a while to be able to do do what I was doing oh, at the I, level. Didn't, I didn't think of it like that but y you have a point there yeah for sure yeah. I mean, it's still a lot and everything I'm doing still feels like <laughs> it takes a lot of attention and focus and energy, but um, it feels nice to have a shift thing in life, you know, it's scary and nice. Yeah, that's a, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of transition and things, but I don't, I'm, well, on a completely, honestly selfish note, I'm glad that you're teaching Pilates and that you have your beautiful studio with Sarah because... I just, I think it's really, really cool. Cool, And I really think the work that you both are doing is really important. And I love, I love your approach to Pilates. And that's, I guess, what interested me in just chatting more with you about what, what your like pedag pedagogical approach to Pilates is and how the different factors that have shaped that, it, particularly around, I guess, breathing. As you know, I come from the singer world where we are obsessed with breath support because it's like all we think about, but yet it's still like this very like amorphous thing that a lot of people don't really understand. And I had, it, it just in some, you know, casual conversations with singers and different professionals in the opera industry, you will hear comments about how, oh, Pilates is like, it makes my neck kind of grip or like it makes my shoulders tight or it's too much like muscular tension, like being held in like one place. And what I 
thought was so interesting when I started going to your classes was you seem, you and Sarah both seem to approach breathing and like the actual mechanics of the kind of like core Pilates moves from a much more breathing breath centered place than other teachers have that I've worked with in the past and or maybe I just didn't listen to them I mean that's <laughs> that's possible too if my mother's listening to this she's like that's why you just didn't listen but I digress um but it definitely like it definitely finally stuck with you both and especially in like any kind of like crunch per se like Pilates crunch or Pilates like sit up you really work from a place of like breathing into your back ribs and really initiating that movement from your ribs and your abs and not your shoulders and not your neck, which totally changes the exercise in this crazy way. And it really made me rethink my relationship just to like this part of my body and how I even perceive like what is actually initiating movement and what's engaging when I take a breath, what's engaging when I start an exhale to start a long phrase. I, it was just so fascinating to me. And I would love to, I guess, hear your thoughts on what is, is that a specific like approach that you are in, you and Sarah intentionally are using to approach these exercises from a very breath centered, breath focused place? And if so, where did that approach develop from? And what was your real, what was your influence for that? Yeah, well, thank you for all of that. I love hearing about, yeah, your your specific experience in my class because I've loved having you in my class. Oh, it, it's so cool. It, it was like, oh my gosh. And I love to hear that it landed, like something landed in a different way. And it's very true. It could be that you heard it and then it just this time it kind of like sunk in for some reason. But I love it was in my class. <laughs> I'll take full responsibility. I will give you all the credit. Yes. <laughs> I think so we both have the same training. We went to the King School of Core Integration that connected and they really emphasized um breathing there, the mechanics of breathing, the importance of breathing. So I think uh, it stemmed a lot from our training. Um, I mean, I didn't really know, or I, I wasn't really interested in the mechanics of breathing and what happens when we breathe until I really went through my training. And then I, I was like, oh, and I had this aha moment where I was like, I've been working so closely with my body for my entire life. Like I felt a little bit like, how could nobody taught me this like I I feel like I could have used this information like it would have been useful in my dancing and any of the movement that I was doing like to learn about diaphragmatic breathing which I, I think I believe that singers probably are much more aware of it than, than dancers I think dancers are also aware of it um but I know that I didn't get a lot of like training or information about it with my dance training so I was just like, whoa, this is incredible. And then once you start really exploring it, you you realize and you notice how like like supportive it is to like the deep core muscles and um, how freeing it, it is, right? So like when you're not kind of like locking down in your diaphragm and your ribs, right? You have as a mover, like more freedom in your thoracic spine, more breath, more expressivity, you know? Um, so I think I just, I had such a specific personal journey with like what breath did for me in my Pilates practice. And then also in my dancing and my performing that I find it really important to share that. Um, I think that it's really hard and slightly tedious to to keep talking about it um but I do think it's the type of thing that you just have to keep talking about and then like we were talking earlier maybe the 200th time somebody will be like oh yeah okay now I feel that you know um 
I think it's a core component. It, I mean, like, it, it's not just connected that teaches breath as a core component of Pilates. Um, for me, the core components are, I think of it as like the ABCs. For me, how I kind of organize, like, yeah, the core components of Pilates, A for alignment, B for breath, and C for core control. And like, what is core control? That could be like a whole other discussion. <laughs> um, it's not just like the six pack abs. It does involve your diaphragm. It involves your pelvic floor. It involves like the deepest abdominal muscles, transverse abdominus that wraps all the way around. Um, yeah, so like ABC, alignment, breath, core. Um, so breath is important. We prioritize it. I prioritize it with every single one of my, my students, clients. Um, yeah. Any more specific questions? I like. I feel like I could go on so many different. <laughs> but it is a choice, and it's hard. It's hard to teach. It's yeah. hard to teach breath. I mean, I I swear I, I I've been trying to figure out my breath support for I feel like like fifteen plus years, and I feel like every day I'm like still like okay, how do I do this today? in the body that I have with the hours of sleep and whatever anxieties, adulting life things have come about. And, and I actually, that I had a, just a, something I'm curious about is you, we've, we've talked about diaphragmatic breathing and I'm curious about what your like if you were to spell out your approach to it, to someone who'd like never heard of like, what is the diet, what is a diaphragm to begin with? And like, thought it was like, I don't know, in their like right tibia or something like what, where would you start? Well, I mean, if I had to say it like completely simplistically, like I would just say three-dimensional rib breath, right? So like feeling how your whole rib cage three-dimensionally front side back really can move on the inhalations and the exhalations right and it's a fine line with teaching like I can say a lot more on it um it's but sometimes too much information if you're just trying to like give a concept it is kind of counterproductive but it's the main respiratory muscle right? It has a doming quality. So as you inhale, it kind of domes down like a jellyfish. And as you exhale, it kind of domes up back into like snuggles into your rib cage. And so what I find really interesting about that um, kind of like trampoline kind of action is that when your diaphragm kind of descends, it has an effect on all the muscles and the organs that are below and above it. So when you take deep breath, you're actually like massaging your deep psoas muscle, you're massaging like your QL, like, right. you know, which is, yeah. which is why like deep breathing is the best thing that you can do for any kind of like low back pain. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think I would say, I think I would say that, I mean, there's plenty say but I love the 3d like breathing through your ribs yeah that, that that's really cool and the and the idea that it's a massage for your so as for your all of the attachments like the lower attachments into your pelvic floor like like your esophagus like I think like kind of I think moves through it so like even if, like yeah it, it, like yeah yeah and and it, the, all the all the well, all the best singers with like really consistent, solid vocal technique that they can rely on. It's all like anchored down. My, my coach was just on me about this on Friday, actually, because he was like, so much, so much of what we do, especially if like you're a high soprano, like me, you know, like you get so like obsessed with high notes and making sure you have space and like is everything like is your jaw unlocked and all of this stuff and you forget that like actually you have to think down and grounded and like in order to have any sort of sort of stability to, to work with yeah. so so much 
Yeah. I, I just, I, I love, I love how you and Sarah approach that. And I was actually kind of curious what, like, what, can you talk a little bit more about the like aha moment that you had in your own like training where you were like, why has I've been dancing at like literally like one of the best companies in the world. I mean, for all the opera people out there, Leslie, basically it's like the equivalent of like, Leslie was on like just retainer at the Met opera house for like 15 years and like also had health insurance. It's like, it's, it's amazing. Like you are one of the top dancers in the world. And yet like, this was like, why is nobody talking about this? I would love to hear more about that. Like, aha moment. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think going back to this theme, I'm sure people were talking about it, but I wasn't ready to, you know, like it wasn't ready to land, you know, but, um, for me, it was like the coordination of core control with diaphragmatic breathing. So it was learning that like, I can use my abdominals and stay supported in my abdominals, right? Like standing, moving my torso, anything at the same time as like, finding that rib movement in my breathing. So at the same time, I can feel, you know, supported and free, right? I can feel strong and free at the same time. Um, and I think when you're learning abdominal strength, it's really easy to have like a bearing down quality, like a really grippy quality. And that kind of like, sometimes that's necessary to like feel how your muscles work, right? To like, ugh, you know? And that can kind of travel up in the neck, in the jaw, in the ribs, and have that same sort of like holding kind of rigid feeling. So I feel like to learn abdominal control, I got like rigid up here, right? To be able to find that. And I, and this is a journey that I see with my clients too. And like, it's not, you know, and then you kind of like peel the onion and you peel the layers and you're like, okay, well now that I, I am understanding like how the wrap of my abdominals, the, the core support, deep core support, like how do I maintain that with like a big, full, deep breath? And you have to start really simple, which I think for me as a dancer, and I see this with like young dancers, um, it's, you're capable of doing really complicated things and you love doing these really big, grand, complicated movements that it's really hard to kind of slow down and work on the coordination of really simple movements and like understanding like how am I breathing when and like how do these things work together and where can I like where do I use just the perfect amount of effort right you don't need to overuse you just need to use just the right amount of effort and then let go of the tension and the stress everywhere else and it you know so I think it was once I um just started feeling the effects of this you know um and I think a lot of it had to do with my teacher Clar Clarice Marshall who made me slow down and do knee folds you know still I say knee folds you know I, I put them in every class and I know I can see some people just being like, well, what? I can lift my leg like this, you know, and <laughs> it's fine. I get it. I was there too. But, you know, you do the same simple actions to find these like really deep um, connections. And so, yeah. Did I answer your question? I feel like I yeah. Kind of yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. But it's also like, it's like bar or it's like, warm-ups it's like vocalises like 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 you don't get to a point or well I don't I don't know I'm I haven't sung at the Met so maybe what do I know but I, as far as I understand like you don't get to a, be an opera singer at a certain caliber and just like you never stop learning or you never stop vocalizing like you don't wake up one day and you're just like it all works no matter what like that like you always are going back to basics and figuring things out just like a ballet bar, just like yeah. strength training and conditioning. Like it's all these little building blocks that support you along the way. Exactly. And yeah, that, that's so cool. I, I'm curious when you're working with your clients and I, I love how you and Sarah work with, I mean, you work with everybody from like students at ABT to you know, my parents who are, you know, my dad's like, hasn't done a day of ballet in his life 
and has no desire to. <laughs> tell them hi. What? Miss them. Please tell them hi. Oh, I will. I will. Yeah. They sh- they should be. Side note: They should be coming to Sundays. Like those. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm 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 gonna strong arm them along. So yeah, gently, of course, politely, in a very nice way. <laughs> um. So you work with clients from you know professional dancers to people who do not call themselves dancers in any capacity. Are there common challenges that you have noticed and observations that you've noticed, particularly with regards to breathing and breath support, where you find yourself making like the same corrections over and over again, just like slightly differently and tailored to different situations and different people? I mean, it, it, it relates very much to what I, my journey and what I kind of was just talking about. Um, lateral and posterior movement in the rib cage breath, right? So I, I see a lot of like bearing down a kind of locked rib cages um, or kind of like locked diaphragms, right? So I like see people kind of breathing from their necks or like, you know, scaling or like, or like, or not seeing a rise in the fall of the chest. Um, So yeah, it goes back to diaphragmatic breath. I mean, I'm obsessed with (laughs) diaphragmatic breath. It's like finding, you know, a lot of people just move like the front of their ribs when they move, right? How do you keep kind of like that lampshade of a rib cage, right? Kind of like shining down and feel it like to the sides and to the back, especially. Um, And I would say I see like finding that back space is probably the hardest um, for all types of people, everyone I work with. And then I would say the coordination of what I was talking about before of um, realizing, learning that you can breathe freely in your ribs while you use your abdominals. Like, like you can, you can feel your ribs move three-dimensionally like in a in a curl you know like in a um when you're doing really hard stuff so like you learn that simply and then you kind of put it in um different contexts right like you make things more challenging you make it harder and you, you just go back to the same concepts of can you fill up your ribs and breathe and and also feel your abdominals working I, I remember when I, oh, oh that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt. I, I was going to say, I remember when I first started working with you and honestly, still to the state, I, this hasn't really changed. I feel like there are so many times when, especially in like a roll up where I have to, like, I feel like I need to like, actually like in my head, be like metaphorically, like take my ego and my, like, just like roll up into a little ball and like, chuck it out the window and be like, this is going to be a very small curl if you do it actually correctly, like sinking down, like really utilizing your 360 ribs, core, like using those back ribs, side ribs, really breathing through your obliques. And like, that's what supports you. And it, and it makes it so clear when it's not correct. It, I feel like it, it's almost like, like when I get like a vocal technique thing and I'm like, oh, now I know when it's not right. And now I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm totally using my neck to like make myself look cooler than this really is. And it's totally not doing me any favors. So I just, I just think that's so, I just think it's so interesting how it like really made me rethink my approach to breathing and support in a really really anatomically sound way so so thank you really <laughs> thank That's you the best Sarah. The best. <laughs> I mean as we say around here like the better you get at Pilates the harder it actually gets so you can like yeah. barrel through yes. everything you know but like when you're really focused and you really like mind body and you're like tuned in and you're using your breath deeply and you're you know 
really focused. That's when you're trembling so hard because you, and you don't have to do a thousand reps and you don't have to, it doesn't have to be the biggest movement ever, but that takes a certain amount of um, trust in the work, you know? And so, and trust in, in yourself. And so it's, it's sometimes it takes a really long time to get to that point. And that's why I like the simplicity of what I do and the like repetition of what I do, a lot of what I do. It's not all simple and repetitive, but um, why I find that really useful as a teacher because um, it takes a while for it to like land. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. It's, it's like a process. I'm like, I'm never going to know everything there is to know about this, but it's very interesting to like keep learning a little bit more. But that's what's so time. great about it, right? I feel like <laughs> I like I'm always learning and I'm always learning through my clients and asking my clients questions and what does this feel like and where do you feel that and like just you know I'm just like blah, 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 and like you know doing all the workshops and the because it's the human body it's like we're not gonna ever really figure it out you know and it and it's always changing every day. You're going to feel different based on all of the factors in life. And um, that's why I feel like it's such a blessing to like work with people with their bodies because it's, it's always going to be a different story every day. Even if I see the same person three times a week, you know, every day they walk in here, they're going to feel something different. They're going to feel their energy is going to be different. And we work with that. And I, you know, we work with where they're at. Which is cool. It is, it is really cool. Yeah. I, um, so I, I want to switch gears just a little bit if you're, that works for you and quickly ask, I know Sarah Deming, Sarah is fabulous. She's not able to be here with us today, but I wanted to ask you and Sarah, how did boxing come to be a part of this and I know I, I and if you're like ah this is more of a Sarah question then like we can totally skip it but I I find it so interesting that you two especially as your name implies knockout Pilates like get to combine these two things that seem to be polar opposites of each other and yet you've integrated them into into one unit in a way. And I mean, for those of you who don't know, Leslie and Sarah offer um, several like semi-private group classes where it's like two to three people max. And one of those is a Pilates and boxing class where you get to do all of your, you know, Pilates moves and also, you know, spar and punch stuff. And it's really cool. How did that, how did that fusion come about? Well, Sarah is the boxer, so she is an extremely talented, amazing woman. I, One I've of the seen, yeah. things about her is that she is an incredible boxer, and she actually won the Golden Gloves. Um, I was watching part of her, the actual, like, match as I was like doing all my research on, and it's so cool. And, and they also, I love that they're like, she's this badass boxer. And then they, they list out like, and she's also a chef. And then like, she's an, a writer and she just does this and this. And you're like, how many lives has this woman led? This is incredible. <laughs> she's a Renaissance woman. She really is just incredible. Having her as a partner is, couldn't ask for anything more. Great. Um, anyway, so she is the boxer. I don't really know much about boxing. Um, I've done a little bit of it now that we have the bag in the studio. Um, and so, but uh, Sarah and I did our Pilates training at the same place, you know, so she, I can't speak to like Pilates and her journey, but I, but I, I'm I pretty sure that Pilates kind of helped her recover from a lot of like injuries that she got through boxing. So she used Pilates, she found Pilates in a rehabilitative way. Um, and so she is always kind of like, it's been another pathway in her like, like physical journey. Um, so, you know, we, she, we're like, why don't we make something of it here? You know, 
So we had this class, which is super popular. People are like, what? Pilates and boxing? Um, and it's great. Sarah like teaches you how to wrap your hands, your wrists, and you, you wear the, the gloves. And, um, you know, you hop on the machines. You're not wearing the gloves the whole time you're on the machines. But um, she just incorporates the, the two together, which is really fun. And I think that they are really complementary, you know, because like the, it goes, it's just Pilates kind of complements almost anything. I would even argue maybe in my opinion, everything. I don't know. I guess maybe some singers would 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 disagree with me and say that, you know. But not if they do it correctly. Like not if they're really doing the work in the way it's supposed to. And I, I think that's where there's a disconnect that has gotten ingrained in some singers' minds and in, you know, some different schools of thought that, oh, you know, exercise looks like this and it feels like this and it does this to you. And really, if you would approach it from a perspective of align what alignment, breath, core engagement, functional movement support, then it's a vastly different story that actually really, I think, aids and supports and informs, as you said, anything, any kind of movement, artistic practice, discipline. You know? yeah. um, and that's why, I mean, it's just, it's a great way of moving. It's great form. Um, and so I think Pilates for Sarah too was similar, you know, it like assisted her boxing and it helped her, you know, stay healthy and strong. Um, in the in similar ways that it it helped my dancing. Um, so you know, we thought it would be cool to have like a fusion here. And right now we just have that one class, our Pilates and boxing class on Tuesdays at six thirty pm at knockout Pilates. Um, but she, but Sarah, if you work with her one on one, can incorporate any kind of boxing techniques into her sessions. Um, and I know she does that with with some people so yeah boxing is awesome it feels really good to hit stuff oh my gosh but all, yeah I mean this isn't exactly along with boxing but Sarah is really into the pull-up bar too and so that's been um kind of a new thing for me to incorporate into my movement yeah. up. um yeah. so that's been really fun too just like hanging and pulling up and we have these assistant assistant bands yes that's it um that kind of helps so you don't have to use just your body weight you can have assistance as you pull up um yeah moving in these big strong global ways feels so good you know that it's just really cool and and I was I was just thinking I I I think you guys might be the only Pilates and boxing place like probably that exists period like very niche yeah I don't I've never heard of it either and part of me is like should we really just go down because it you know it's very uh very niche so I feel like people are people like it it's fun everybody come try it out (laughs) yes yes I actually I need to try that Tuesday class out I might there's you might see me in that you should soon I've been meaning to go again too so maybe go together you can see just how like my upper body strength is like, oh, oh geez. <laughs> see, I probably need it. Let's be, let's be real. I, Everybody could use like a little like. Uh, oh gosh. Well, what I'm, I'm curious about, you know, we, we talked about the ABCs, uh, alignment, breath support, core control, core support. Um, We talked about boxing. We've talked about your journey, you know, to get to where you are now. What I'm curious how Pilates and being a business owner has informed your artistic practice and what your creative goals as a dancer, a choreographer, a creative, like what, what do you see the next phase of your life that was 
that was poorly phrased. What what kind of creative goals and pursuits do you see in this like next phase of your career? And how do you have an idea of what types of projects you would like to take on and how Pilates may or may not inform those projects? I'm just I'm curious what what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, um, good question. I love that you asked me this question because it makes made me think about it. It makes me think about it. Uh, well, I think I, as far as like connected to Pilates in the studio, I, I'm really interested in um, having more like community relationships and more like collaborations with uh, people and businesses in the community. So um, like our, we have neighbors in kind of pole, it's a pole dancing place. And, you know, there's a coffee shop down the street and there's, you know, all these cool communities. Um, there's another Flotty studio. I, you know, so I would love to just like get to know the community more and think of ways to kind of do something creative and fun together. There's City Well, the spa that I love. Do you know about this place? No, I'm gonna. Oh my God, it's heavenly. I love it. It's a boutique spa um, on President Street. I love the woman, Liz, who runs it. Um, I've always wanted to do something there and do like a, you know, spa and Pilates night or something where everyone could like work out for a little bit and mm -hmm. then like have a hot tub. So I'm, I, that's something that I've always wanted to do, like more community involvement. Um, and I just, you know, in the first year of running a business, it's kind of you've just been like <laughs> trying to get everything done that that hasn't happened as much as. I would like it to. So I would love to go more in that direction for the studio, creatively, community-based wise. And then for my own artistic moment and self, um, that's a big question. Because, <laughs> you know, I like it, there's a big shift. I'm, I'm doing way less um, of my own artistic stuff and way less dancing. So I think for me personally, it's going to be kind of like, studio space journey like just getting in a studio by myself and spending some time like creating new material improvising um I think going from a big uh, company that you know there wasn't a lot of like improvisation or like tons of collaboration it was there was a lot of like this is the choreography that you do which was great I loved that um and the dances were like incredible I think coming from that moving onward I would love to you know play with my own voice and my own vision and my own choreography which I think will start kind of uh like by myself I think it'll start pretty uh alone you know I think I think I kind of have to like go through my own little I don't know internal journey for a second before I can kind of come out and see see where I'm at yeah yeah, yeah. I'm the yeah. Future, see like some studio time just me and rolling around and wiggling around on the floor maybe making some dances for myself um you know maybe and then seeing where I'm at there but I think it's it's a lot everything and so I you know I haven't had time for right I have time for when I do have a kid so it's a little bit like you can only do so much so right now that part of me is just like taking a little bit of a rest which is um you probably need it I mean after being in that environment for so long where like your schedule is so regimented, you know, someone is telling you what to do at all times. Like it, it, there are pros and cons to that, I suppose, but it, you, you need to balance it out. Yeah. It definitely feels like a relief to, uh, to just acknowledge that I am an artist. I am a dancer. I always will be. And that even though right now it's, I'm not doing it, as much as I used to, or even as much as I would like to, right? That that's okay. That this is just right now. 
I'm focusing on other things and that like I can trust that that's who I am and that I will like come back to it kind of from a new perspective from a new place and like how interesting might that be, you know from a new angle and that like breaks are cool and that you know it's sometimes it's necessary to like focus on something else and focus a little bit more here but you know and right now like my priorities are just they're very clear you know like I have my family I have my son you know and then I have right now like my business and um figuring this out and building this and um and you know so that's my plan yeah I I think it's a cool plan I that's just me. What, you know, what do I know? But I think it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm actually, I'm curious because you mentioned Ellis, the cutie patootie Ellis. Um, so you, I, I think I wrote in when I sent you the questions, I have it here. I said, you're doing the thing I'm possibly most terrified of doing one day. <laughs> you, you know me at this point, and, which is that there'll be a day where I'm like, I'm just doing everything at once. I'm working, I'm married, and now I have a kid and I'm like balancing all of this stuff. And I'm curious what, since having Ellis and embarking on this journey as an entrepreneur, a businesswoman, having a business partner in Sarah, what have been the biggest surprises the biggest struggles and like what has been your biggest win throughout all of this journey thus far? Biggest surprises are how hard all of technology is. <laughs> <laughs> or like all of the like thing, the parts of like business that you just don't even realize go into all of this. Um, I don't know, just like our scheduling system and you know, how confusing and weird it is because I didn't spend a lot of time in my life like on the inside of a computer with technology, you know. Um, so it, yeah, it has been surprising like how hard that stuff has been. Um, when, I mean, building, space in a community you know a safe space like a welcoming space you know where people feel comfortable and like we work on what they want to work on and I mean I can't ask for anything more than that like I, I want you know nothing more than to welcome people in to like move their bodies so they feel better in their bodies and then therefore in their minds and like breathe fuller and deeper and um and I have the space that I can call my very own you know like Sarah and I have made this and we're a year in you know we're still very much That's like at the beginning but um I feel so proud of of that um yeah and and just out of curiosity it what has been the biggest struggle? Knowing that you're doing everything, uh, that everything is enough, you know, that like, that, you know, what you can give in this moment with what you're doing in that moment is, is good. Like, even if it wasn't what you're used to doing, you know, like when I was performing with Ellis, you know, for, for that year that I performed, and danced. Um, I used to have these really elaborate warm ups, like where sometimes I would, you know, I would do Pilates, like I would warm up for like an hour for class, you know, and I had my things that I did. And, and then, you know, I had Ellis and I was like sneaking in like two minutes before class, like doing like a few releves. And I'm like, okay, this is where I'm at, you know, and I wouldn't have changed it because I was with Ellis before the, you know, before class, I was like soaking up every moment I had with him. And then also realizing with Ellis too, like I am a better, fuller mom when I, when I give myself in these other ways. And when I feed my artist and when I like 
right. build my business, you know, that actually makes me a better mom, you know? Um, so that's hard to keep, that's hard to keep track of. Like that's hard, you know, because when you do so many things and you wear so many hats, you can't be everywhere all at once. And you have to just know that all of these things are a part of you and they're all just like feeding each other. You know what I mean? Like your artist, your work, your family. Um, so just remembering that. You, you, you give me hope that this is possible to do. And that's... We're also said... Pretty cool. I believe, you know, lots of things about being mothers and being women in the workforce and you know I in no way have it all figured out but like I can say that you can you can do it you know you can you can have it all why not you just gotta know that like it's gonna be a constant negotiation and a constant you know that reassessment and assessment but like if you're doing all of the things that you love you're happier you know you're more energized like you're not drained like that's how I feel like I'm not like oh I have to go I have to like leave work and go pick up my son you know I'm like, or I'm not like I have to like go to the studio like all of these things if they feed you it's gonna make sense yeah so I don't know, especially now, nowadays with like dancing too. Plenty of moms are dancing and continuing to dance and in big companies and not in companies, you know, it's so inspiring. And, um, and I think that like being a mother, you know, feeds you like the love in your heart just explodes and it feeds all the parts of you, you know? So it's just this like cyclical, like, love best you know like you just like it's not it's not impossible you can do it I I remember when um we met for coffee like earlier this year and like the first thing out of my mouth I swear was like I just like I don't know how how do you do things and be a mother and you live in New York. And I, I was like obsessed for some reason, probably because I've done a little bit of nannying for a couple of singers who were at the Met um, this past year. And it, I was like, how do you get a stroller down into a train station? I mean, like, how does it work? Like, half of them don't have elevators. This is crazy. How do you make this work? And all literally you were just like, well, you, you carry the baby in a sling on your body. And I was like, wait, wait, people do that. And I was like, oh my God, that, that like, there's a solution to that. And you're like, yeah, it's no big deal. You just carry him until you like, he can, you know, he can walk and then you're good. And I was like, have I been overthinking something that like not isn't even a problem that I have in this moment? <laughs> the answer being yes. Yes, Melanie, you are. Always scarier until you're in it. Like same with me too. It's like the anticipation of motherhood. It's like the, and I really think it's like the anticipation of it. But then once you just like go for it and you're like, okay, this is my life now. I have my son, which is the best thing that's ever happened to me. And also I'm a dancer and I am a bit like, this is, then you just, a new reality and you just like make it work you know and it happens and and then when you're doing it when you're wearing the baby on the subway you're like, oh like this of course like this isn't so bad you know and it's not so of course it's hard and it's exhausting and but it's full it's full of life and it's like full of like what you what feeds you and what what's important to you you know it's definitely not easy but like, but then, is this worth anything? Right. And nothing's really easy. I mean, especially in New York, it's like, so you might as well do things that you love to do with people in your life who you love unconditionally. Like, <laughs> so yeah, you get, you give me hope and make, make, you're showing me what's possible. 
which I think is also really cool. And I think, and I think you're showing many people, not just me for sure, what is possible. And I just think that's really cool. So thank you. That means a lot to hear that. I believe in you. No. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Um, a two, okay. Two last questions. Well, one last question. Yeah. I don't want to, um, keep you forever, you know, it was because you have like a business to run and a son to probably pick up at some point, you know, like literally that we just spent all that time talking about. Um, one more question and then some rapid fire. What's next for knockout Pilates? Like what are, like, if you were, there are people here who probably haven't been to yours and Sarah's studio yet. Like, what would you tell them? Be like, Hey, if you want to get involved or you're interested in trying this out. Well, we have our semi-private classes, max three people. Um, you know, we're building those up. So that's a really great way if uh, private sessions are too expensive um, for you. Uh, three people, we circuit around on all the machines. Those are Tuesday morning with, with me at, at 9.30, Thursday morning at 9 a.m. with Sarah. And then there's the plotting and boxing one that we were speaking of Tuesday nights, 6.30 p.m. Um, we also have a virtual, a weekly virtual class on Sundays, 1030 AM. So anyone, wherever you are, you can join us. This class is for all levels. Um, it's really nice. It seems to be like a good time for a Sunday. It's not too early, not too late. I feel like especially with the cooler months coming, it would be a nice way to just get some movement in. So, um, yeah, you could join our virtual class. Uh, we have one more park class of the season. So we do, we've been doing these monthly uh, Prospect Park pop-ups. Um, and they're that's super fun. <laughs> so fun. They've been so successful. I can't, it's going to be sad to not do them over the winter. But I, I never thought it would be so calming to do Pilates like under the trees. I'm like, oh, this is so nice. It's so great. I love it. Um, so our last one is next. Sunday, October 15th at 10 30 a.m. So if you want to join us in the park, that would be fun. Um, and then we're just we're just in the studio. You know, we have a new client three pack that we always offer. So um, anyone who's interested in coming to the studio and giving us a try out, um, there's a majorly discounted little three pack, uh, which is always good. And no, not how Pilates is just like, we're just chugging away, like um, bringing people in, trying to do some community events and um, make people stronger. That's what we're doing. Yay, yay. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, we're, I have a couple of rapid fire that, questions that are just for fun. And this is completely inspired by this podcast called The Screaming Divas, which is very fun. You, you should all, anybody listening should check that out. That out. Um, but before that, um, where can people find you on the interwebs, socials, all of that? Knockoutpilates.com is our website. Yes, that's right. Um, and then we're on Instagram at K period O period Pilates. Um, and then we have a Facebook, Knockout Pilates. We have a Knockout Pilates Facebook page. And yeah, sign up for our newsletter. We send out monthly newsletters that are that have fun content. Um, and that's it. Yeah, knockoutpilates.com. Awesome. Yes, everybody, I highly encourage it. K, the k.o.pilates on Insta, knockoutpilates.com. Follow Leslie and Sarah. They are fabulous. In case you haven't already figured that out from the last hour. So much, so much, so much good work being done to help people feel better in their bodies, feel good about themselves, and also have the information that you need to, you know, promote longevity. And as you said, the ABCs, the alignment, breath support, core support. I'm, I'm, I'm like, that's going to be the basis of my week is like <laughs> alignment, breath, core. <laughs> um, so sweet. No, thank you. Really. I appreciate you taking the time. I know, I know you're a busy woman. Um, okay. Some rapid fire. So this is inspired by this podcast called the screaming divas. They're very, they're very funny. I love them. Um, it's a, just a lightning round of quick questions. Like first thing that comes to your mind. Um, so 
your favorite word. Knockout. First thing, okay, shit hits the fan, like days started out terribly. What's the first thing you do? Breathe. Best piece of advice of advice you've ever received and the worst piece of advice you've ever received. Oh my God. Keep going. Uh, worst. Oh my God. I don't know. I don't know the worst one. What? A, I know there's a what? Yeah. I don't know. Worst. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's good. That's good. Um, one New York restaurant that you can't live without. Um, you know what? I'm gonna say Joe and Sal's. It's a pizza place in on uh, in Crown Heights, Franklin Avenue. It used to be my go-to pizza spot. Yeah. Okay. That I've been. I'm still looking for a good pizza spot. So the, now I now I'm glad I asked this question. I uh, one bucket list item. Uh, go to. Tokyo, Japan. Never been there. I really want to go to, to Japan. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, well, Leslie, thank you so much for really taking the time to sit down and chat and tell us your story and about not more about knockup Pilates and all of the work that you and Sarah are doing. It's so important. It's really, really vital. And it's so cool to see two women coming together, working together in collaboration to not only be the, the stewards of their own business and their own story, but also to build something that is giving back and helping others in that process. So thank you so much for sharing your time and your energy. And I really hope that anybody listening to this takes something away from that that's of value and then also follows you on Instagram and signs up for a class. So yeah, thank you. Thank you much, Melanie. It was so fun to chat with you and been enjoy to get to know you and to have you in my classes in the studio and um yeah thanks for having me it's great